disilfiram or antabuse. Let's talk about it. So disilfiram is a drug that is used for the purposes of deterring people from drinking alcohol. And it does a very good job at that. It is actually classified as an anti-alcoholic drug. So to the handy whiteboard. The class of the drug, again, an anti-alcoholic. The mechanism of action is that this drug inhibits the conversion of alcohol into acetaldehyde into acetic acid. So this right here, acetaldehyde, builds up and builds up and builds up within the patient's system to toxic levels if the patient ingests alcohol and the patient becomes very, very sick with flushing, extreme projectile vomiting, an absolutely horrendous headache, dyspnea, and even death. And so this is what makes antabuse or disilfiram a very effective alcohol deterrent. So next let's talk about the side effects versus adverse effects. So side effects are things that we're gonna teach our patient to expect with this drug. Side effects should not deter your patient from taking the drug. Side effects are not to be reported to the provider, only adverse effects. So some of the side effects of this drug that we're gonna teach our patient about include drowsiness, a mild headache, some fatigue, possibly some blurred vision, which we need to teach our patients that about driving so they don't need to take this drug and drive initially until they know how it's going to affect them. And then also another side effect is a metallic aftertaste. Conversely, our adverse effects, which do need to be reported to the provider if our patient experiences them, include unusual bleeding or bruising, which we know is a common manifestation of liver malfunction, um, yellowing of the eyes or skin, so that's jaundice, that's buildup of bilirubin within the system, which we know is common to alcohol dependence and cirrhosis and liver damage, chest pain, obviously dyspnea, and they need to let the provider know if they ingest any alcohol at all. And I'm not talking about whiskey or beer or vodka, anything that contains any alcohol at all, even some medications, which we're going to talk about. Nursing considerations when it comes to administration of disilfiram. So obviously do not give this drug within 12 hours of ingestion of any alcohol. And there are some medications that sneakily contain alcohol. And so these medications have to be avoided as well. None of these meds can be taken within 12 hours of disilfiram. And those are metronidazole. Uh, the other name is Flagyl. Amitriptyline, which is Elevil. Coumadin, which is Warfarin. And then Dilantin. And so a, a neat little way to remember these four meds is my aunt can't drink. Okay, so remember those four medications cannot be taken within 12 hours of ingesting disilfiram or antabuse. Also, the patients need to have liver function tests drawn before starting this drug. Think about what this drug does. So basically, it leads to a buildup of that toxic acetaldehyde, which is a byproduct of alcohol, it leads to a toxic buildup. So that is gonna be damaging to the liver. So these patients have to have liver function tests before starting the drug, within two weeks of starting the drug, and then every six months while on therapy, because we have got to keep a close eye on the patient's liver function test while they are on this drug. Finally, teaching, obviously, no alcohol, or you're going to become very, very ill, and you could possibly die. We want to teach the patient to take the medication at bedtime. 
um, and see if it's going to make them feel drowsy or dizzy or they're going to experience that blurred vision that's very possible. And we also want to teach these patients to wear a medic alert bracelet to let EMS know that if something bad happens to the patient, if they collapse out in public or something, that EMS knows, hey, this patient is on disilfiram. That is disilfiram or antabuse in a nutshell. I hope this helps. Make sure you follow for more. Good luck on all your exams and finals and always go balls.